So we are studying the book, Empty Lives by Joana de Angelis, psychographed by Divaldo Pereira Franco. And we are in chapter four. And we always like to make a remark that uh, each chapter presents a different topic. So regardless if you are just joining today, you will still, you know, get the whole thing <laughs> because each chapter brings something different, something new. Of course, uh, all of them related to the title of the book that is Empty Lives for us to start analyzing our lives, analyzing ourselves and being able to to, uh, through an uh, evaluation, improve ourselves, improve our lives. So the topic today is very interesting. We are talking, we will be talking about finding your peace. So find your peace. And um, as a reminder, this book was uh, received and written in 2020. So um, it's actually very current with what is happening in our lives today. So I'm going to start reading, okay? Find your peace. In the turbulence of the days being experienced on earth, disturbing phenomena are multiplying at every moment, challenging people's ethical values. News devoid of real significance fills the social networks and the variety of distractions competes with duties that are waiting with no chance of being met. Time seems to fly due to the many ways available for escaping from one's responsibilities promoting gossip and curiosity around trivia that take on undeserved significance, while at the same time causing existential emptiness, giving the exhibitionism of tormented individuals who make news through virtual artifices. There has never been so much loneliness among human beings as there is nowadays. At the same time that the population of the planet is reaching an extreme rate, filling all the available space. Disordered ambitions and unjustifiable worries reign, tormenting minds avid for notability as if the goal of life were just a deceitful plate of social pleasure, which causes envy in some and dislike in others. Illusion has produced an exaggerated panorama pulling individuals from their reality to raving landscapes of fantasy. One gets the impression that only the dream of possessions and power promotes well being, even if it pulls the trigger of inner dissatisfaction and fear of not being able to enjoy it indefinitely. The demands of modern technology have imposed the behavior of speed so that one may appreciate all the contributions of virtual communication while preventing, to a certain extent, one's delving into the normal questions of existence. New standards of conduct have been imposed and the robotization of the human beings has occurred automatically to some extent. With this automation, sentiments of love, solidarity, tenderness, and charity, etc., have been set aside to the detriment of emotional development and reached with an understanding about the purpose of life and its real needs. So I read a bit more today because this is a long chapter. So let's see if we can <laughs> um, cover all of it. So uh, find your peace. 
she, Joana de Angelis, start by showing to us what is in the way of us get finding peace. So first of all, she talked about the turbulence, the difficult times that we are facing on earth. And when we talk about it, we are not talking about geological commotion and all of those things that definitely can provoke a lot of disturbances and remove the peace of people. But she's talking more about the inner side. She's talking more about moral values. She's talking more about the way we as a society have been behaving. And uh, in a way, she is um, mentioning as well that social um, networks, if on, on one side we know they are very positive, on the other side, we know how much we can be entangled and attracted by everything that is happening in those social networks to the point of um, uh, not dealing with our own responsibilities. For all of those that have, you know, children, teenage, youngsters at their home and not necessarily that young, we see how much people sometimes or how much they are just there checking the phone, doing, you know, uh, interacting or just uh, watching what is going on and not be uh, paying attention to what they have to do. Like, you know, homework, studying, <laughs> family, socialization, uh, sometimes even with adults, so you can go to places, let's say, to have a tea or dinner or lunch, and you see two, you see two people sitting on a table, and both of them are just looking at their phones, not paying attention to the one that is front of you, in front of you. So this is what has been happening. And of course, with all this kind of distraction, we at times sometimes pass by very fast. And, um, and we do not find time to deal with what we should be dealing, including thinking about ourselves or looking for things that would help promote our well-beings. You know, reading a good book, even watching something that can be enlightening to you or engaging in uh, very nourishing conversations, nourishing in terms of the soul. And when we think that because of social networks, we have uh, so much going on, uh, you know, so many friends in Instagram, Facebook, whatever, at the end of the day, you realize that you are alone and you feel lonely because not necessarily having this kind of interaction makes uh, or builds important relationships. We feel attracted by everything else that is happening, the life of others that we are always seeing, you know, people posting about happy moments. Uh, very rarely we see, you know, unhappy situations being posted. And uh, it gives us the wrong impression that, you know, there must be something wrong with my life because everyone else seems to have been having a very great life you know, possessions, powers, like this, she says here. And when you look at all that, it gives you a sensation of, you know, failure, inner dissatisfaction. I mean, and when we have something, oh my God, let's make it, uh, you know, last, because maybe I will not be able to deal with that or, or to have this kind of moment anymore. And um, here, I'm, I'm sure the idea of Joanna de Angelis is not to say, 
move away from social networks. We know how much it has been really a great help to the dissemination of good things, but to be more mindful of, you know, how much time we are spending on it, what kind of, you know, is always like a, a matter of what are we tuning in with, right? I mean, it's very much like when I'm listening to radio, watching TV, you have a variety of options, right? And you go in accordance to your uh, uh, own way of being and thinking. So, and not necessarily this is going to help us, right? Depending on what our whims are and what we are looking for. And of course, with all of this, um, sometimes, let's just say here, we, we don't, do not find the time to sentiments of love, solidarity, tenderness, the, all the emotions that could be really enriching in this you know, relationship we can have with each other is not happening. So now we will stop and see what you would like to share with us. <laughs> well, yes, Sasa. Yes. Um, this is this is a perfect um, explanation of what's going on in the world. Joanna DeAngelis is so so on target and so perfect to explain these things to us because now I see in this new technology, the network and social network and Facebook, all this new um, technology that has come to, to guide us and help us because it is a good thing that we can connect different ways opposed to just talking on the phone or visiting or whatever. It's a, it's a very good thing, but everything has gone awry so so many things are happening now. I, I have an example of um, my great granddaughter when she comes to visit me. She's 11 years old now, and I've seen this change that sometimes I feel like, how much could I explain? Because I don't live with her, she lives with her mother. And so, what I find is that she's more with this new technologies with the phone, with the computer, and, and, and networking with her friends. and. She has, I don't know, this change of, of living a, a different way. And, and I've seen this change overnight. So I'm, I'm, sometimes I, I can't get involved to the sense that she lives with her mother. I'm not going to tell her mother what to do, but I have spoken to her mother about it. But if the parents are also doing the same thing, how in the world could we fix this? And, and, and but. I don't know. I mean, Joanna DeAngelis is so on target to let us know, unfortunately, that things are happening and a lot of people are getting, uh, ignoring it, or maybe they don't know how to deal with it. So we have to be aware of these problems because, you know, children especially, uh, the is, is their future. And if they grow up with this, how do you untangle this? I, I think our deck gave already the, 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 the answer to that is everything about education. And when he says, I'm talking about education, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, learning. To, uh, I, I don't remember quite well the expression that he uses that is perfect, uh, but it's not about, you know, learning subject. It's about, you know, the education of the soul. So uh, uh, let's say, you know, uh, for quite some time, you know, people would say that books uh, could drive your soul uh, to, to the devil, be, or, you know, there was so many restrictions in, in terms of book uh, looking for intellectual enlightenment. And um, even nowadays, we can say, <coughs> well, there is a <laughs> Sorry, a variety of books, you know, with good subjects and bad subjects. So people can can choose what they do and how they do it. So one thing is, 
are we going to say that this is bad? No, it is not bad. It's yeah. good. But how are you using it? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of information are you looking for? What kind of information are you sending to the world? And um, just to justify this generation a little bit, we have also to remember that for almost, you know, even a bit more, but at least two years, mm -hmm. they were not being able to have any other kind of socialization. Uh, they had to stay home because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessing uh, because today we are seeing so many people, including children and adolescents that have been presenting mental health issues because of, you know, uh, this times of isolation, etc. So that was a blessing. Uh, but then again, uh, instead of fighting with then keeping their phones too much <laughs> on their hands, maybe we could go Oh, okay, look at my phone and look what, what an interesting image we have here that we could talk about it. Or look at this uh, story that we have here. So, you know, to use this possibility, this technology to say, okay, I know it's the new world, but you still can choose topics that are going to be more productive and lightning and bring, uh, you know, good things to you, uh, things, th things like this. So I think as, you know, educators, meaning yes. parents, grandparents, friends, etc., <laughs> we can, you know, give this kind of examples. Uh, of, uh, you know, so, you know, cell phones are not bad, Facebooks are not, it's not bad, you know, Instagram is not bad. What is bad is it, it can be with what I'm connecting. Yes. So that's it. Sonia? Yes, I, I believe she's called our attention, not about the technology per se, but in this sentence, the robotization of the human beings, then this, the, we are losing our ability to be ourselves per se, and to show this for the others, to share with the others, our own personality trying to repeat the same in image of happiness mm -hmm. the other show about the exterior, the, the material things, not the human feelings. Yeah, and you see, it's interesting while you were talking about it, I was thinking, how much susceptible and influence we receive from others. For instance, now I have my bottle of water, I'm going to take a sip. Mm -hmm. And probably many of you will think about doing the same thing. Thank you, Sarita, for yeah. <laughs> proving my point right, right? We I forget did. about, if you go to a place and see someone taking a sip of water and you have water next to you, you get it. <laughs> this is what, oh my God, I I'm thirsty. I need that, right? So when we are looking at pictures that, oh, a new haircut, I need a haircut. Oh, this new purse, I need this new purse. So, you know, I, it, it's, and marketing knows that very well, right? That's so this, this is the thing. Uh, we are very susceptible to these actions and images. And again, it's just a matter of what we are going to tune with, in with. So let's continue a little bit more. The valorization of the body, of its appearance in a ridiculous and often pathological code 
has replaced the deep imperatives of the individual with the ever increasing demands of the ego. However, those individuals who cannot enjoy such exaggerated amenities look like lost ghosts floating around without goals or meanings. As a consequence of this phenomenon, emotional torments increase and people's highly fragile structures give way to depression in some and violence in others. Psychological stability is very necessary for one's self-realization since it enables one to manage the different events that happen at every moment. This control, though not always achieved, resulted from the wholesome habit of social interaction and an exercise that builds inner skill. Human beings are a composite of their behaviors, which become mechanisms for sustaining their existence. For that reason, in these days of continuous challenging, finding peace becomes the most valuable goal one can have. So here, continue in terms of, you know, uh, thinking about everything that, uh, you know, this kind of behavior brings in us in terms of, uh, you know, being more um, worried about the satisfaction of the ego, which is the, the, the external values of life versus the self actually thinking about ourselves and our inner emotions. And I like very much when she says here that we are a composite of behaviors and how social interaction helps in this sense, because we are constantly learning from one another. And um, when we are having a face-to-face, -face or uh, it doesn't even need to be face-to-face, -face, but like we're doing here, really having a conversation, we will be learning from each other. We will be able to, you know, show more our emotions than just like, you know, uh, something that uh, looks like a, 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 a picture, right? There is just that frame that we see that, that has nothing to do with what the person feels or how this uh, in social interaction can help us in all of this sense. And, and, and how many times it is because of those kind of social interactions that we will find, you know, a shoulder to cry or someone to share an experience that we live that may be very good, very important. And you wanna share with someone, but people are too much, you know, into their uh, all superficial things. And, uh, and like I said, you go out with a friend to have lunch and then she keeps on checking just her phone instead of, you know, giving you the opportunity to share things that you would like in a social relationship. And, and this is what she, she tells here. It's uh, the most important thing for us in terms of finding this peace, in terms of not placing um, our happiness in objects of desire that not necessarily are going to fulfill us. Well, let's read the now more. Uh, it is normally thought that peace is the absence of worry or of continuous action, but there is nothing more than selectionist, a lack of dynamism and paralysis. I love this phrase. You know, it's not a sense of worry or doing things. A serene countenance often hides an existence that is actually fraught with worries, anguish, and despair that have been overcome with boldness and persistence. Not necessarily when we see someone that presents, you know, that serene face, uh, everything is pitching their lives, right? It's work, it's going there, you know, it's persisting. However, one may look at it, uh, may look at it, struggle 
however one may look at it, you struggle with the messenger of order and order enables one to find inner harmony. The issue is how one manages the activity that requires effort, selflessness, and persistence. The individual psychological maturity is a decisive factor for edifying behavior in any circumstance, culminating in that state of equilibrium that foreshadows peace and plenitude. These entail daily experiences that accrue ennobling decisions. If you really want to maintain a healthy outlook, one that promotes true happiness, equip yourself with patience and perseverance in every situation in which you find yourself. Press on without ceasing step by step to achieve your priority goal. Do not be discouraged by obstacle or be afraid of failing at first. Failures foster the skills you will need for success in the end. So she's talking about um, understanding what peace means. Uh, and knowing that we are in a world of transition, you know, the transition of ourselves, right? Trying to improve as immortal spirits. We cannot imagine that in the short term, <laughs> not even medium term, we are going to be living a life devoid of uh, struggles. Uh, you know, it's, it's part of our spiritual education. We will be facing challenges, adversities um, that at the end are there just to nourish our skills, just to allow us to be able through different experiences, uh, learn how to do better. Uh, I was thinking, I look at Sonia and I, 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 I remember how many delicious things Sonia's prepared for us when we have our, you know, gatherings. And I'm sure some of the things that she, she, she prepared uh, at first maybe didn't come with uh, uh, the flavor that she wanted. But then with time and, you know, practicing more or finding different ways or different tools to prepare to bake the same thing, you know, she just became better, right? Uh, and now I'm thinking about Sorida's cake as well. <laughs> and I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, well, no. Right? <laughs> so yeah, it is part of, of our journey. And that's why she talks about persistence, not being discouraged, patience. Maybe we cannot do that, that, that something that good now, but we, if we continue with patience and persistence, we will achieve this possibility. It's just not um, falling into, you know, states of mind, a mindset that will put us down and say, you cannot do it. You, you know, every time you try, you try, you cannot do it, or, you know, it's not, at your reach, you know, maybe not yet, but if I, we keep going, we will be able to do that. Yes. So yes. So why sometimes it's not easy uh, as parents to educate, to show the way, because the way we can show, we can teach them, but, they really learn about every time when they try and fail and learning with their own ability and all behavior, own behavior then it's 
sometimes we try to guide them, but the way they choose, it depends about them. Their whole life, their whole spirit. Very much like ourselves, right? And uh, again, like we were saying before, uh, Joana de Angelis aim is not to say that this technology you know that we have achieved is bad for us she's just saying in, in the same way that you know we are going to be choosing what to eat what to drink uh, uh what to do what to read what to watch uh how to you know uh, to work or on our behaviors is the same thing and it, it, it's a choice uh, we can use that really to connect with people really to to build lasting relationships uh, really to learn from the good examples of others there are so many good things happening and that we are aware now because of this technology. Uh, so many selfless actions, actions that are happening that before we didn't know because, you know, bad things always made more noisy, more noise than, than the good things. But it's there. It's just a matter what are we going to choose? So it's the education of the soul and not depriving. So nowadays, if we want to deprive anyone for, from, that has this possibility from the use of uh, this technology, they will say no. I mean, even because, you know, I live in this world now and everyone is doing the same. Uh, yes, everyone have uh, this technology or, you know, many, not, not everyone, because many countries do not have these possibilities and people, but uh, for those who have, everyone is doing that. And, uh, but everyone is doing that differently, right? And uh, this is what benefit I can get from that benefits that are going to be lasting and building, uh, you know, uh, a better person that is my aim or, or even lasting relationships that it will be my aim as well. So again, thinking about Sarida's granddaughter, if you go and say, well, when you come home, I don't want you to be looking at your phone, probably she will stop going to her home. But if you say, oh, let me see what you're doing and, uh, and trying to interact and say, oh, is there anything about uh, something or is there a, a, a cartoon that we can watch, watch together? And then you watch the cartoon and I'm sure you will find uh, uh, something interesting in the topic to mention, a good thing there. So, you know, we have to work around. Yes. And, uh, and really use that to our benefit. Yes, so understanding of what we go through, and, and we thank you for that. And you're absolutely right. When, when she comes and she is now concentrating and playing with herself, I will try as much as I can to sway her out of that. And, and sometimes we do exactly that. We want to look at a movie or, or a game. I, you know, she loves tic-tac-toe and all these other games. And I have them here. So I distract her from that. But then I worry when she leaves, <laughs> if, if those that she lives with are not guiding her. So, you know, I, I find it a, a, so sad that you can't, you know, get into this... Um, idea that you're going to tell the parents how and what they should do. I'm not going to do that. But all I can do is just like you said, when she's here, we take good time to, to work at positive things and try to sway her off this um, new technology, which is not bad. Absolutely not. She's a wizard when it comes to this. And sometimes I'm afraid of that. 
she knows so much. <laughs> and you see, I was thinking, you know, it's just because of the night that we can appreciate the day. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, because it's not a matter of quantity, but quality, if while she is with you, you are offering this kind of quality that is, is, is going to bring, uh, you know, this uh, genuine uh, kind of happiness and peace because it's fun, because it's nice, even for like playing a, a little game. Okay, let's see if your mind is sharp, all of those things. You see, when she, she goes and see, she exposes herself to, you know, things that are not going to bring the same kind of emotion, little by little, she will be able to, to, to make to see the difference say oh you know what when i i do that with my grandma it's fun and i feel light and uh, and when i I'm, I'm doing this other stuff i i don't feel the same thing and so unconsciously she will have a tendency of looking for you know more uplifting in a way to say things right uh, so yeah it's but um you know preventing them from 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 doing that is impossible so okay. let's read a little more keep in mind that self is, uh, that every self-illuminating achieving is realized with tenacity and love trust and dedication oh my god that <laughs> <laughs> it was the perfect return for this break right oh my goodness oh my god self-illumination is tenacity and love and trust and dedication Amazing. political peace often fails because there is no way to make individuals harmonize with any type of outside imposition on the contrary and once inner balance is achieved, the pacifying effects manifest in the environment. So this is what we are talking about here. Donna DeAngelis is telling us, you know, it's about what goes with you and how to achieve it. Consequently, it may be stated that in a home where one member has found peace, the whole family benefits. And when a peaceable family dwells on a street, the reflection extends to neighbors. And on a street where life is value, it affects the entire neighborhood, the city, the region, the world. Peace is the bearer of blessings that promote the ability to show love and charity. Thus, peace is fundamental for constructing an exuberant life. Its absence is personally upsetting because without the serenity that calms one's anxieties about one's desires, and helps one discern what is best for one's ethical moral development, existential voids result, which one may try to fill with arrogance and perturbation. So when we, we are not looking for things that can promote this uh, feeling of well-being within ourselves, there will be this void, there will be this, uh, you know, unbalancing in way for ourselves. In this sense, because ex spiritism explains the fundamental reasons for existence and the objectives to be achieved, it contains the most excellent explanatory elements for finding inner harmon harmony. In this sense is, you know, uh, is to answer the perennial questions. From where did I come from? What am I doing here to where am I going? Once we understand that in the immortality uh, and reincarnation and uh, earth as being a school, 
everyone knows what you have to do in school, right? You go there to learn and not always, uh, you know, all the subjects are going to be easy for us. There are some that we even want to, you know, not to have, right? At least for now, but we will understand that our education cannot be completed unless we have all of them. So once we, we understand that, it's only natural that we are going to be looking for things that is going to propitiate us this kind of knowledge and understanding, and of course, leading to inner peace. So never cease to love and serve, marking your acts with kindness and compassion. It is not about consenting to irrational behaviors, nor being indifferent to the attacks of evil. It is a decision to remain in a state of active vigilance without the ups and downs of ungoverned emotions. So this is very important. And, and you know, the, the highlights are mine, it's not in the book, okay? Just in case you think she's the one highlighting. No, I, I, I was highlighting and I, because, you know, in a way you have to highlight everything, but some things I really, I think it's so important for us to, to talk about in terms of uh, what she's saying here is, uh, uh, we are not saying that um, we are going to maintain a patho pathological state of inner peace. This doesn't uh, exist, right? And it's not the correct way of think, being indifferent to what is happening in the world saying, oh no, I, I, I wanted to preserve my peace and I, I couldn't care less what is happening in, around. No, it's not that. We, it's, we understanding that we are in a world of transition, that we all have, you know, imperfections, that we all will have to go through struggles, that everything is happening within uh, us, our lives and the lives of others, but maintaining, you know, balance maintaining this inner desire of not being excessively affected by what is happening around to become one that is also going to advocate for, for you know, uh, fight among ourselves, uh, wars and unkindness and all of those things. We should be the ones to help keep the, the, the balance between everything that is happening around that is not having balance. So when one is imbued with the understanding of collective process, the ego produces very special situations for its benefit by releasing archives from the unconscious giving rise to conflicts that resurface because they were not really overcome. So we, we have to pay attention because we all have something, right? Or I mean, more than something. <laughs> and sometimes the ego that is the, the, our part that wants to keep us in this superficial values, uh, it will try to resist, to, to make a, a resistance in terms of, you know, us finding peace. So it's like saying to us, oh, you wanted to not be affected by this situation, but let me remind you now it liberates some of the memories we have about, you know, situations that is going to aggravate the ones we are going through now. And not necessarily we have dealt with uh, in, in a way of overcoming it. So th this is why it's so hard, it is so difficult because when we are, let's say, rising to the occasion that comes something that, pushes you down again and this and removes us from peace. Okay, anything else? Make sure that your actions result from profound reflection, provides you with the right choice of the way forward. 
take the gospel of Jesus as a roadmap for behavior. And in every challenge situation, ask yourself what the master would do if he were to make a decision. The decision. This is so true that so many you know, religions, philosophies talk about the same thing. Such inquire may clear a path through the thicket of habitual torments and like a guiding light, it will clarify your thoughts and will help you find the trail to follow. We know what to do. We have the phrase, but many times we say, mm, I don't like Jesus answers for that, right? <laughs> so I'm going my own way and we make a mess, <laughs> right? We get into trouble. We get into trouble because, you know, our conscience, where is written the law of God? One question that I know by heart from the Spirit's book, I hope I'm right, 621. <laughs> and please check and let me know. Where is the law of God uh, written? And the answer is in your conscience. So we don't need, we don't need, uh, you know, go farther away to know what we have to do. It's there in our conscience, but, you know, the ego buries that. It just releases things according to its own interest, not to necessarily promoting our well-being. And we go against what we know is right and complicate our lives. <laughs> so this is what she's telling us here. Stop doing that. Stop living empty lives because, you know, with everything that you're trying to fill this existential void is, is not, it's not right. It's not the, the right path that you're doing. So when Jesus promised that his peace, he affirmed, affirmed that, he only, that only he could give it. That is because it is a consequence of individual behavior in experiencing the postulates taught and lived by him. His serenity in every situation showed us the greatness of his ethical values. Knowing that he would be betrayed by one friend and denied by another, he showed neither annoyance nor disappointment. Instead, he gently revealed the dangers they would later face. And after the tragedy had been consummated, he searched for the former who had committed suicide in the realms of torment into which he projected himself. And the latter he once again invited to shepherd his flock. If you desire such peace, follow the master and imitate him whenever you can. And without realizing it, you will be storing up the peace that will make you a true son of God. <clears throat> so it's one of the angelists talking here about Judas and Peter, right? That Judas had a, 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 a different idea about Jesus' mission. And he thought that he, he, if he gave a little push to Jesus, Jesus would come out in all its splendor and, you know, move away the Roman dominion over Israel and all that land. And, but that was not the mission of Jesus. Jesus was there to remove the obstacles of our souls, not the material obstacles that were presented at the time. So, um, there is a one phrase that Jesus says, my peace I give to you, but not the peace that the world knows. I think it's perfect for us here. The peace that the world knows is what we are 
seeing <laughs> social networks, right? <laughs> Vacations, pictures, new hardos or, or things. The peace, the peace that Jesus offers us is the peace of the soul, the peace of a heart that tries to follow, you know, what we all know it is good and should be our direction, our guidance for life. Any comments or questions that we may? And I believe we are, uh, we have so many blessings to have the, to know the gospel, to study the gospel. Because of course, in every challenge, I never asked myself what Jesus would do in my place. No, no, I know this way, but so many times I try to find the answer in the gospel. How many times I opened the, the gospel or one nice book to read and to transport myself in another place, not in this one, then that I can find the answers and the way I can take. Then it's really a blast to, to have this opportunity in this group. Then we study the gospel again and again and always learning new, new things in between lines and the opportunity to understand a little bit more. Oh. Thank you very much. Acknowledge in our favor. Great. Thank you, Sonia. Anyone else would like to say something? You know, all I know is that we have to find this peace, our inner peace. And it's going to go through a whole lot, we're gonna go through a lot of hurdles and until we get it right. But when we study this, I mean, there's an open door there that it makes it easier to go and very slowly learn step-by-step step all his virtues that Christ is giving us to keep us at peace. And, but it has to be an everyday occasion not obsess ourselves with it because we have to live this life of so much, you know, bustle and trouble around us, but at least to focus and keep our thoughts with him. And, and it, we will get there. It, it is going to take, like they, they teach us here in spirit, it's going to take centuries, <laughs> millenniums before we get to a point, but at least feel the peace while we're here is so important, it's very, very important because it, it'll lift everyone around us and, and help the world out there that is going through so much and not, not blame the new technology or none of that, just work around it and know where our limitations are and understand these limitations and and go with what she has just explained to us, uh, Joanna DeAngelis, with her beautiful mind of giving us so much to, to deal with. We are, we are grateful and we thank you, Dusara. Thank you. You see, it's like she's, she's, she's telling us, um, you know, in this book, Empty Lives, I know I understand and in this topic in particular, you know, you want to find peace. This is how. How oh, it's up to you. It's up to each one of us, right? Uh, that's why I think it's uh, so important for us to be able to to have this, to have this kind of guidance, and to have this moment where we, we can share, that we can meditate about it, exchange our opinions about it, and uh, and then have you know this. <laughs> whole week at least to think about it and <laughs> what would Jesus do, <laughs> right? Well, you know, if it weren't for politics, I could probably enjoy a lot more peace. 
Yes, absolutely, absolutely, but yeah, like she said, even when you cannot change around, we can change the way we feel about it. And of course, being affected because affects, it affects us, but not being one that is going to be fomenting even more conflict or even stay in a state of disarray and imbalance uh, that is not going to bring any good to society and of course not for ourselves but definitely yes marley <laughs> thank you